congratulations on your graduation from Seattle University School of Law. Thank you for inviting me as the president of the university to make a few remarks in this virtual ceremony specially prepared for you. I want to reflect on the function of law in our society, a function which you now serve. I start with a well-known quote from Henry David Thoreau in his book, Walden. He writes literally, but also figuratively and very evocatively in the following way. I had three chairs in my house, one for solitude, two for friendship, three for society. You had plenty of the one chair of solitude in your years of studying the law, and I'm sure you greatly enjoyed the two chairs of your friendships. What you are now about is the three chairs of society, being in service to society, or as the pilaster along 12th Avenue alongside Sullivan Hall reads, a life in the law at the service of justice. When I think of law, I consider it primarily as what structures society, gives the body of society its skeleton. There are many things that structure society. Education, supposedly the great equalizer, structures society, and so we have a college of education at Seattle U. Business, the economy, finance, structures society profoundly, but very unequally for many people, and so we have a school of business and economics. Science, as we are learning so tellingly right now, structures the very viability of society, as does the built environment, and so we have a college of science and engineering. Religion, for all powerfully structures society, though seemingly less and less in these days, and so we have had a college or school of theology and ministry. Healthcare is critical to the structure of society and the well-being of its members, and so we have a college of nursing. My view is that each of these serve and structure society in its own way, often dependent upon the degree of access to them. Education, economic opportunity, scientific competence, religion, health care. But it is law that creates the very scaffolding, the framework, the conditions, the foundations, and the operating principles within which, within which all of them function. Law structures society in a more fundamental and a pervasive and critical manner than any of the others. As it were, it provides both the playing field and the, ru the rules of the game for all of the other determinants of society for the quality, the equality, and the well-being of persons in society. When today our American society and many throughout the world are under such great stress about who they include or exclude, welcome or banish, support or neglect, hide, see or hide, help or impede, care for or ignore, there can be no greater force for the common good of all and the achievement of the purported ideal of society than a life in the law at the service of justice. Since law structures the very grounding of society, an unjust society is one that is based on unjust laws, laws for some but not others. Laws that benefit some at the expense of others. Laws that recognize, respect, and serve some, but deny or denigrate others. I think we can say that only law can right the society, can make our common living right. I've often said that if I had not become a priest, I would have become a lawyer. I think I said that because I wanted to deal with what makes the most fundamental difference in people's lives. I believe I do that by being a priest. I believe that you do that through being lawyers. Perhaps as priest and lawyer, we are collaborators for the same common good. Benjamin Franklin said, a lie stands on one foot, truth on two. We all know more clearly now than ever how much our society has stood on only one foot in its enactment of the first three words of our Constitution, we the people. The we of we the people has been a lie. No persons with a calling, a vocation, a profession, more than those in service to the law, can make our ideal of we the people stand on two feet, become at last the truth of our society. So know the importance of your calling and strive to live up to it. The poet Richard Wilbur puts the lie and the truth of our society 
and the remedy of our betrayal through law quite powerfully. I'll end with this in these remarks on your graduation from Seattle University's School of Law while congratulating, thanking you, and encouraging you. Richard Wilbur. Mourn for the dead who died for this country, whose minds went dark at the edge of a field, in the muck of a trench, on the beachhead sand, in the blast amidships, a burst in the air. Grieve for the ways in which we betrayed them, how we robbed their graves of a reason to die. The tribes pushed west and the treaties broken, the image of God on the auction block, the immigrant scorned and the striker beaten, the vote denied to liberty's daughters. From all that has shamed us, what can we salvage? Be proud at least that we know we were wrong, that we need not lie, that our books are open. Praise to the land for our power to change it, to confess our misdoings, to mend what we can, to learn what we mean and to make it the law, to become what we said we were going to be. Thank you. Mm -hmm.